Rome was a superpower, a powerful superpower. It was there to fulfill God's purposes. God raised Britain. Britain became a superpower. Through that, it, we were able to receive the gospel all over the world. And now God raised up America. What I'm saying is countries are raised by God uh, because of the uh, eternal purposes that he has. And America is like the big brother, is like the watchman of the world, uh, is anointed by God and raised by God for his special purposes. It is a very special nation in the heart of God. And uh, so America is now preparing herself to, go, uh, to enter into elections. And these elections are... Uh, are going to determine so light, so much. It is like it is a, uh, uh, it is something. Uh, it is a conflict between righteousness and uh, and wickedness. And so, which way shall America go? We know that they are witches, they are sorcerers, they are raising up altars, uh, you know, to ensure that they propel the candidates that they support to come into power. What about the church? We live in Kenya. Some of our friends here in Australia, others in Malaysia. I know many Malaysians have joined this meeting. I see uh, people are keeping on joining. Uh, so we have to take responsibility. So... Uh, this afternoon, we don't have much to say. We're just going to get on prayer. But I want to invite, uh, before I invite the woman of God who is going to lead us in prayer and share her burden, uh, Apostle Kathy, you are most welcome online in the name of Jesus. Apostle Kathy is my good, good sister in the Lord. We network with her. She's an apostle and a very powerful woman of God running. So the church, I will later on be introducing her because she's also going to be leading us in prayer. But you're most welcome. Right now, I want to welcome a very powerful woman of God who is also my friend with her husband, Pastor Roland. They have been senior pastors, pastoring the full gospel assembly uh, based in Melbourne. And I just want to uh, introduce her. You know, Evelyn Xiao studied in the UK and graduated, graduated with a Bachelor of Science from Queen Elizabeth College. A part of London University, and she got a master's in solid state electronics from UMIST, England. They returned to Malaysia and established the following ministries after being transformed by the charismatic revival uh, in the UK in the late 1970s. Uh, she started, they started the, the first spirit field care center whereby all children uh, of ages three to six who attended, was saved, spirit-filled, had God and moved in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I know that my friends like Jonathan, Deborah, I think they were part of that, uh, you know, part of what you began in Malaysia. And we celebrate you for that. And then uh, she was a director uh, of the children's ministry in FGKL. That is a mega church in Malaysia. Helped establish toddlers' classes, babies' class, parental ministry, and trained teachers to minister. Started the first, the first, this is so powerful, the first Christian school uh, in KL after nine years of prayer and getting established. I have preached in that school and it is such a powerful school. All former mission schools were nationalized and this is a Christian school. She helped her husband to establish the IPN ministry, which ministers to pastors, uh, uh, the IPN means impact uh, pastors and nations, something like that. I'm forgetting <laughs> what it means, but she, she helped establish that. So a couple of months ago, God awakened her daughter Priscilla in the U.S. to pray for U.S. and Trump. At the same time, God also put a heavy burden uh, in her heart and several other members to pray for the U.S. as it was more uh, than the election but it was a fight for righteousness, justice, and Christianity. Brothers and sisters, let's welcome uh, Evelyn, uh, Minister Evelyn Xiao, to lead us in this session of prayer for the United States of America. You're most welcome. Yes. I just wanted to share a verse um, in Psalm 89, verse 14. It says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. And um, the burden started when uh, God started to awaken my daughter in the U.S., which is 
quite a miracle because she was a very liberal backbencher, just uh, um, not very active in church because she's very uh, busy with the work. But um, God supernaturally, she has a very powerful prophetic gifting, um, laid those out. God supernaturally just awakened her and put such a burden in her to pray for the U.S. At the same time, I had the same burden, but I mean, yes, I, I know what is going on. Yes, I do pray. And she started to share with me about um, all the lies the media has been uh, spinning out against Trump and asked uh, whether my ladies group can pray for her country, U.S. now and uh, President Trump. I said, okay, I will so I just posted a very simple uh, prayer request for the ladies in our chat group to say, oh, um, a lot of lies, has, uh, my daughter has requested this prayer for her president. A lot of lies has been uh, twisted about him and, um, and that uh, he has done such a lot of good things, but they've turned it around. Uh, to be bad and things like that. And I, I think normally, like I, I shared with um, my group that um, she, um, President Trump has passed a lot of bills to help the Black and Hispanic and uh, saving so many uh, babies' lives from being aborted and um, also spending millions of dollars to fight uh, human trafficking, child trafficking and sex trafficking as well and he built the wall that uh, uh, prevented a lot of uh, children being trafficked from South America as sex slaves into New York City and um, he protects the uh, church and Christians and uh, he's pro-Israel and I just ended saying that darkness seems to seek to take over U.S. So you would think that um, all Christians would, would say, yes, we will pray for U.S. and Trump. But um, one of uh, my ladies um, from the ladies group just innocently shared this with her cell group. And lo and behold, one person in the cell group went into rage and um, actually um, called up the senior pastor. The, we have handed the senior pastor ship to our nephew um, and we are the founding pastors and protested and said that, no, you cannot pray um, for the US. We are the church not supposed to be political at all. So um, I, I had a long chat with my senior pastor and I said that standing up for righteousness is not political. But um, the Lord gave me a strategy to start a prayer group, a special prayer group, because half, I think most of our young adults are against Trump. Why are they against Trump? Christians, you know. But um, then I started to, um, the Lord started to reveal that there's such darkness from, um, such darkness that is going on in America that is way beyond, way beyond Trump or um, the election. The very fact that you mentioned the name Trump, they go into rage, literally. And um, four letter words will come out from their mouths. These are Christians, right? And then you realize that why is that such a opposition? So instead of prayer, it has become a warfare, full on warfare in our eyes. And the Lord was showing that um, it is a battle against the very two pillars of his throne, righteousness and justice. It was, I found there was such a lot of uh, I'm just saying about Trump and how the media literally lies. They, they, uh, CNN is a, a real, um, at first it's a bit subtle, now it's totally overtly, they would lie about it. Uh, for example, like um, the protest that you see on TV, uh, the riots, and um, you see the military guys going in as if to attack the rioters and so on. And they say they are so peaceful and so on. No, they are not peaceful. They are uh, Marxists and uh, Antifa and, uh, terrorist rioters, and they were going to burn down the government buildings and they want to cancel the culture and tear down the, um, their history and so on. And President Trump has sent the troops in to protect 
they are government buildings. But even our news in Australia is um, uh, putting it as if that um, Trump was being a dictator standing in the army. Um, that was not told to us, but um, my daughter who is in America, that the Lord has given her this skill that she is, she's able to go into very conservative circles and draw in news from uh, live news from the ground and the grassroots level to show the truth of what is going on and how the media has twisted um, the whole whole uh, situation against Trump uh, is a very leftist media, so much so because most of the world watch, uh, watches CNN, so much so that people would just watch what they see on TV and what they see on Facebook or whatever, because Facebook has started to censor things and started to vilify people, um, say uh, when they come out with some truth that is opposite to theirs. And, um, and so much so that people are filled with rage in them when they the word you mentioned about Trump, they they say, oh he's a clown and he's a, they they pick bits of here and there, twist it and present him as a real ridiculous leader. So um, so the Lord is saying that this uh, this is is injustice. And uh, what is righteous, they are turning it into um, evil. What is good, they turn it to evil. And what uh, what is evil, they, they say is really good. And God was uh, started to burden. Um, it was really, uh, I couldn't sleep the whole night. And I was praying in tongues. And um, it was, it was uh, a fight. The Lord says it is. This is the manifestation of the demonic kingdom that we are coming against. And, um, and, and he has asked uh, quite a number of us individually, uh, separately, to awaken us to, you can start praying. And what was really uh, strong in my heart was that for God to wake up my daughter, I, she's, um, she loves the Lord, but she doesn't, she's not an intercessor of prayer. For God to wake her up, to go into such deep intercession and a burden, I said it must be very serious. Um, it's almost like God will wake a uh, pastor so and so and so. And so no, to wake her up like this, it must be a very serious situation, a dark situation that we must, we must, because it's Christianity and she was saying that it's coming from her which is um, I am at homeschool her you shouldn't be surprised me but I've talked to her before when she was very liberal it's coming from her she says mom it is not even about election or Trump it's Christianity is being attacked and um, they started to burn Bibles and that's when they started to silence their silencing Christian voices. So it's not just a left wing, it's, a, it's, a, it's the whole force of evil and darkness coming against America because it is, it is um, the foundation of America is to have for Christians to be able to practice their faith. Um, freely, um, the uh, the Puritans went, the pil uh, the pilgrims that went into uh, Jamestown that started America that side is so that they can practice Christianity and and God has given that land for Christians to flourish and when they attack the very foundation, they are attacking Christianity. So if America goes, it means that it will be the end for freedom for all the free world. Um, to, the way that we can practice uh, Christianity freely, you would have to be, we will become like Christians in China, where the government really suppress, um, uh, suppresses the people so incredibly and persecuting them. So this is a battle that we must win. Yeah, we must absolutely. win, not for America, it's for the world, all right? It's for the world. Um, freedom for a revival, freedom for Christianity is freedom for us to be able to run Zoom meetings like this and to preach the gospel. So that's why um, the Lord has raised quite a number, I mean, um, different groups all over the world to rise up to pray. And that's where I started the uh, prayer group, Awake, Arise and Pray. It is a, a battle is going on 
and that we must uh, tune in to and align with God. I know President Trump will win. Um, victory is there, but we have to fight um, in the sense that we have to pray. All right, so we can do pray now. And I think um, the first thing to, um, and the um, main uh, topic for me to pray is for the media. And we want to pray truth to come to media because you can hardly get um, truth anymore. Um, what you hear, what we hear in Australia, I have to question many times. Uh, are they telling the truth? Are they, because they're very biased in their views and they have their voice, the big voice. Christians, we, I, I, I tell people, you know, in Australia, we have no voice. In America, at least they have Christian TV station. But in Australia, we have no voice at all. And whatever they want to feed us, lies and deception, um, they have all the uh, the voice to do that. So we, but we have one big voice. It's our voice to pray and intercede and we want truth truth to be revealed truth about uh, the coronavirus um now they are coming up with figures that are so shocking that is such a minor thing which they have blown up in america um the cdc said that it's around six percent that actually died of the the um disease and and that is even questionable and um I'm in Melbourne, we are under a draconian lockdown. Um, and our premier says that he might even want to extend that. We can't go out shopping two by two. You can only go by one person. But uh, eight to five is total curfew. And um, you can only go out of the house uh, for one hour for exercise and that's it. And, and so um, we have to pray and we cannot meet. All of us uh, in church, we have no freedom, no voice at all. We can only meet over Zoom and people, uh, suicide rate has gone up, um, uh, family violence have gone up. You see ads on TV about mental health. There's uh, due to uh, the lockdown, uh, mental health has increased. And the youth, um, I know of two uh, suicide cases uh, within uh, the circle of people that we know of, one 14 year old and one 40 year old, um, have committed suicide. These are people we know. There are lots of cases that are unreported. So we want truth um, in media. Okay, let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we know that uh, we are living in such a time of uh, great darkness and uh, there's a battle, but victory is ours because we have the voice, your voice, we have your authority that uh, Jesus, you say all authority is given to you and you live in us and we have the same authority and we want to come against this spirit of deception in the media, Lord Father, in America especially and, uh, and it has filtered into even in Australia and in many other countries that they are controlled uh, news and uh, there are a lot of lies being uh, spoken to control and deceive the people and fill the people with rage that they can't even hear you, Lord Father. We want to tear down this um, antichrist um, a spirit that is using the media to deceive in Jesus' name. We bind that and we take authority over um, that. We, Plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus over the media. And lies will be broken. Deception will be broken. People will be, uh, will, will be convicted of um, these lies that they're spewing up. Their conscience seems to be so dead, Lord, or twisted, Lord, because they're in deception. We break this um, deception that the enemy has sown, not only in America, but all over the world, Lord, Father, against them and against your principle. Um, uh, that you are, that, that there's the nation under God, Lord. They even want to take God out of that. Father, we want to come against this Antichrist. As long as it is under our watch, this spirit will not take over the world in Jesus' name. We want to come against um, the, um, these lies, and these reporters that are coming out with this, they seem so biased. Father, you'll remove that deception. You'll see the truth, Lord, Father. They will see the truth and they will report truth, Lord. 
so that journalism and even um, media will at least portray truth, Lord Father. We just thank you. There will be a shift in the whole atmosphere of the news uh, um, media, Lord. Father, that you will break down all this stronghold, even in Facebook, where they vilify people who are speaking the truth and they suspend them and they ban them. All the social medias, Lord, I pray, Father, uh, Christians will wake up, Lord, Father, to what is going on. Father, that you'll break this uh, influence of this uh, machinery that the enemy is using. We Break his power. We uh, take your claws off Facebook. Take your claws off Twitter. Take your uh, claws off even in Instagram and um, all these uh, YouTube. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus that will break and disperse this power of darkness. Lord, you were exposed, especially in U.S. No male um, invoice and deception and cheating in um, counting of the votes. Lord. Lord, you will prevail. You will prevail, Lord Father. And as we have stood in the gap, that you will honor all the prayers that have gone up for U.S. because it is for Christianity. So that your righteousness and your justice and mercy and truth will go off before your face, that righteousness will be established, justice will be established, so that your throne will be established in US and in all the other countries, so that your presence can come down and men, our revival will come forth, Lord Father. We ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen. What a powerful prayer from Minister Evelyn Nassiao. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, background information that you've given us and for the burden that you have for the United States. Uh, that the truth, you know, I like what she said is uh, the freedom of America is the freedom of other nations, the freedom of worship. You know, Evelyn, we tried to boost our meeting on uh, Facebook, you know, but they, they, they could not allow it to go through, you know, because to boost you pay some money. And uh, every time we put in America and praying for American elections, <laughs> it was cancelled, you know, <laughs> you could not be boosted. So uh, there is a threat on our media freedoms if a wicked man enters into that position because America has a lot of influence all over the world. And thank you so much for that prayer. We believe that the Lord is hearing us and the Lord is answering. And he, even as you say that you believe that he is going to win the election, but our prayers have to push him. That is the power that we are generating. Thank you. Now, I want to invite um, the next person to lead us in prayer, my good friend and co-worker, co in the Lord. You know, very, very lovely woman of God, Apostle Kathy who is the senior pastor and the founder of Sozo Church, which is based here in Nairobi. Uh, we've been uh, networking together in prayer initiatives ever since January uh, with some of our other play friends like Apostle Thiniel and uh, Pastor Pamela. And she is also very greatly used in the prophetic ministry. And I know she loves America. She's been praying for America for a number of years and she has a burden for America. So I welcome Apostle Kathy. Please come on and take us to, uh, to, you know, to the next prayer points in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, brethren. Uh, it's wonderful to see my sisters on one side. And then, of course, Apostle, or Apostle Subi, thank you so much as always. Uh, it's always a pleasure to minister together. The Holy Spirit always flows powerfully. You're a man of prayer and, you know, wherever we are amongst people that love to pray, the Spirit of God is always there. In the end time, the Lord is clear that uh, his true friends are the intercessors and the world belongs to the intercessors. So gone are the days when the intercessors were in the background. You know, we, we are going to take the world and the nations through prayer only. Um, and the preaching will just be part of what brings the revival and all, but prayer is really it. We are possessing the ground. Um, maybe just to share a little bit um, about my burden for America. In 2016, I was praying for Kenya because <laughs> um, since 1997, the Lord has always led me to pray for Kenya whenever the elections are coming up. 
And he began to tell me who he wanted to be the president. And so I would engage in birthing and talking to several people to see how we can birth um, the Lord's will for our nation, Kenya. And I personally always thought that my burden was only for Kenya. I could only get the prophecy for Kenya. But a Kenyan friend in the States called me and told me, I know the Lord speaks to you every five years about Kenya and I need to vote and I don't know who to vote for. I didn't even know they had an election. I'd never paid attention. I always thought of America as a very evil place, <laughs> to be honest. And um, so she asked me, who do I vote for? I said, are you kidding me? Me only know about Kenya. And then she says, no, the Lord is one. And if he speaks to you about Kenya, he can speak to you about any nation. I said, I don't really think so because you know, America is too big, too far, etc." She told me, just go pray. So I went into prayer and within less than 10 minutes, the Lord had spoken clearly. As a woman at that time, I was in senior management, sitting by myself, you know, in the board of management. Um, I was very, I must confess, I was pretty feminist. So I was very sure, I mean, it's got to be Clinton. After all, you know, she forgave her husband when he cheated on her. You know, so all these physical reasons, you know. And uh, the Lord said, no. The Lord said, it's Donald Trump. And I, I said, if I, I asked the Lord, what, the buffoon? Because at that time I was calling him a buffoon because I thought he was just a really dumb guy with orange hair and he'd talk and you'd be like, how can he even be nominated? And I said, Father, the buffoon, and you know what the Lord said to me? He said, he's my buffoon. You know, and I was so shocked. And God asked me, who told you that it's up to you to decide who I appoint for leadership? And at that point, I had to move into repentance. But then I said, Father, you, you know, you ask us, come, let us reason together. Could you just explain this plan to me a little bit? And the Lord began to show me a vision of Hillary Clinton at that time. And I saw her standing in total darkness and she looked like a skeleton. I couldn't see any flesh on her. It was like a skeleton, like where you'd see those horror kind of movies, but standing in total darkness. And then the Lord told me she is a witch. So I was very confused because obviously, you know, I found her beautiful. She forgave her husband for God's sake. Those are godly principles. She's brilliant, a lawyer, you know, looks good and all that. And, and I said, Father, really? And the Lord said, yes, she is. Then the Lord took me through two scenarios. One, Hillary became president and the Lord took me straight to Israel. And immediately she spoke war against Israel, disconnected America from Israel. And the Lord told me, do I need to tell you anything beyond this? He said, she hates, she hates Israel. Then immediately the Lord took me to Donald Trump winning. And then he was standing by Israel completely to a point where I started seeing his hand signing a document and I saw it written peace. And the Lord said, he is a friend of Israel. And I said, Father, I know you stand on Israel. And based on that alone, I don't even need any further explanation. But by and by, from that time, the Lord kept showing me a different visions of if, if Hillary should take the position, I was seeing a lot of just darkness on the land. And then anything to do with Donald Trump, I kept, the Lord kept saying, I will use him as I used King Cyrus. Then the Lord also took me to seeing his decisions were making Americans panic. And God said, America has depended on itself for a long time. And I will give them the kind of president who will cause them to look to me because they know that if anything is dependent on him, the nation will collapse. So that's what the Lord said to me. He said he wants America to go back to him. And isn't that what we've seen? So I released... Um, the prophecy online and you know i didn't even give my name or anything because i was like oh my goodness this is too much and indeed the very next day in america it was fulfilled and that launched quite a bit of my ministry because quite a number of people who didn't know me that's how they got to know me and and that's the journey then in 2018 the lord sent me to america and i went to um I actually went to uh was it it was about 12 states in just a period of two months. So I was, I really moved around a lot, but God handpicked the states. And in every state I went to, 
I had a very supernatural experience and encounter with God, either while driving through or in the atmosphere of getting in. And he would tell me what that state represents. And uh, in Atlanta, which is I think what uh, the woman of God from Melbourne has just spoken over, Atlanta is actually the seat of media. That's where CNN sits, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, when I walked into Atlanta, the Lord told me you are coming to deal with Leviathan because the spirit is Leviathan. And, and, you know, I've worked in media for seven years before I, that was my last job before I went into full-time ministry. So I've worked in media. So I know how the media operates and how the media works. And if, if we do not arrest um, the media in America, we're in trouble because part of what the Lord also said to me when I was in America, in, uh, in Virginia is where the Lord told me that's the seat of government. And then the Lord told me, that as America goes, so does the rest of the world. So as America goes, so does the rest of the world. And from that end, that's when I really got engaged in really praying for America and keeping up with what's going on in America. And I also understood the contention. And just linking up to what our sister said, um, Christians across the world have been deceived into believing that the church should not have anything to do with politics. But what I say is, Christians have nothing to do with politics. We cannot engage in that. That's a whole religion. But we deal with leadership. We deal with leadership. Because even when you look at when the first king was anointed by Samuel, he was actually the Lord who sent Samuel to go and anoint him. If you look at the Bible, there's not a single president. I mean, those times were called kings. But there's not a single king who comes into rulership until the prophet on their head. So as believers, and this is what I've done in Kenya since 1997. I was very young at the time, I was still in school, but the Lord began to lead me and I didn't even understand it. And every time I'd go to my pastor at that time, my pastor would always tell me, forget about politics, the church has nothing to do with politics. And I believe that's what Satan wants because then he will do what the Bible says that while they were still sleeping, the enemy sowed tears because that is sleeping. And uh, the scripture I want to lead us in prayer with in just a second is from um, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. Basically, as, 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 as the church of Jesus Christ, it is our role to seek the Messiah, who is actually the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And say, while it is not your desire for us to be, be led by human beings and to have a king, if indeed you allow anybody to lead us as a king in our nation, who will you have lead us? And so whether it is a senatorial position, governor's leadership uh, position, uh, representative of any kind in our nations, we must learn to go before Jehovah. And then from there, birth the person into leadership, anointing them in the spirit realm and securing the gate in the atmosphere. If we do so, then we'll be safe. And then after that, of course, we then take time to pray for these leaders, you know, when they're in office, because we fail to pray for them. We pray the Lord gets them in there and then we, we get involved with the world and begin to condemn them just like the world. But we need to pray for them. We need to stand in the gap for them. We need to, you know, stand on the scripture that says that the heart of the king is in the hands of God. And like a river, he directs it. How is he going to direct it? Only when we call on the name of the Lord so that we may also live at peace even as nations. So I want to read for us from Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15, and then we go ahead and pray. My prayer is that beyond this prayer time, what we will be releasing on this platform is uh, the revival in our hearts to pray. Just like our sister said that her daughter began to be woken up by the Lord in America while she was just minding her own business. My prayer is that the Lord will begin to stir each one of us up like that so that then our prayers may join up in the heavenlies and fill up the bowls of incense and be presented before the Lord. So Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, I want to emphasize on the, on the part that says that the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. If we are gatekeepers in each of our countries, wherever we are, 
and maybe for the ones in the congregation, you feel maybe a country may be a lot, but you can be a custodian of the area where you were born or where you live. If we each take on that gateman kind of approach, then indeed the kingdoms of this world will manifest as the kingdom of our God and Savior. And indeed, we will reign right here with him. Shall we pray? Our precious King, our Master, our God, and indeed the one that we have the privilege to call our Father, we gather as your sons, O Lord Jehovah God. And like Caleb, we say, give me this mountain. Father, we speak this declaring of America. Won't you give us this mountain, Jehovah God? Father, as you did in 2017, Jehovah, allow, O oh God, this vessel that you have chosen, this vessel that has been so fought, this vessel that we cannot even begin to understand how he continues to operate sanely as we've never seen opposition such as the opposition we have seen. Won't you allow him to finish the work that you have begun in him, Jehovah? We take time to repent, O oh God, on his behalf. In any area where, Lord, he has failed, or in any area, Lord, where he has not allowed you to move. But my king, as your sons, we come, O oh Father, and we discuss this estate of yours, Father, which is our estate, which is America. And my God, we reason with you. And we say, Father, this man who is not a believer, my God, he has done things that believers before him have not done. Father God, we know full well that the Bush family is a family of born again Christians, yet not one of them, Father God, was able to ban abortion in a single state. But Father, my God, in the reign, oh God, of Donald Trump, my Father, you have caused there to be an undoing of Roe versus Wade, my God. And my Father, if for nothing else, we know that the life of the unborn is so special to you. Father, we also understand as your servants, oh God, the meaning, Father, King of glory and Molech is denied an altar. For Father, we know that for an abomination to fall upon a land, Satan has always used particular abominations. One of them is bloodshed, Lord God. In particular, the blood of the innocent Jehovah. For Lord, that tends to raise up, oh God, your wrath. Jehovah God, the other thing that the enemy has used since time immemorial is Lord God, the issue of sexual perversion. And we have seen President Donald Trump refuse homosexuality, my father. The other thing, Father God, that the enemy has tried to raise and has used time immemorial as the third weapon, Jehovah God, has been the issue, oh God, of idolatry. But this president, my God, the one you installed yourself, Jehovah, as we called upon your holy name, when we didn't even understand, my God, he has been heard to proclaim, not once, but several times, that no matter who is president, <laughs> Jesus is still the king. My God, we want to ask you, Father God, that when we look, oh God, as the other side, oh God, as they stand side by side with Biden, Jehovah, we see more wickedness, Jehovah God, than we even saw, oh Lord, Jehovah God, with Hillary. Father God, we look also, oh God, upon his running mate, Jehovah God. And we have seen what she stands for, King of glory. And my Father, we prostrate ourselves in your holy presence. And my King, we want to repent for the church in America, Jehovah. For indeed, Jehovah God, they have assumed, and especially the church, oh God, that has black people in America, quite a bit of it, has moved defiantly, Jehovah considering Donald Trump to be a racist. And Father, I don't know, and we don't know because we don't live in America. But Father, we have seen the three things, oh God, about this man, Jehovah God. And Father, I know, oh God, he's not a racist because God, you would never appoint a man that is led by hatred and by the shedding of bloodshed and call us as the church to pray for him, Jehovah God. And so we nullify the lies of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, 
Father, we take authority over the principalities that are parading themselves and masquerading themselves as angels of light and as voices of righteousness across America. We silence them by the blood of Jesus Christ. We bind them now by the authority given to us as sons of the living God. And we say you have no place in America. We take authority over you. Father, from these places you have put us, from these mountaintops where we stand in our nations, Jehovah, we stand in agreement and we say that your purpose in America shall stand because God, we are a light unto the world, not just in our nations, but unto the world. And so we take authority and we declare by the name that is above every name. That includes the name of CNN. That includes the name of all their media houses. That includes the name, oh God, of even Facebook and all the others, Jehovah. We take authority and we decree and we declare that the purposes of Jehovah, they shall stand. The purposes of Jehovah, they shall stand. My Father, your word says, who can deliver out of the hand of Jehovah? So Father, who can deliver what you have decided upon the nation of the America? Oh God, out of your hand. My Father, as you did it without them even knowing what was happening. My Father, as you shocked CNN because I was watching. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Master. Father, we see again an America that is trying to exalt itself, an America that has not really learned its lesson. It's still thinks that the power is of the president. They do not understand that America is in your hands, that America is too critical. It does not belong to them. And so, Father, as the church of Jesus Christ, we say, Father, take this vast born, O Lord Jehovah God. For America sits as our first born together with with, with uh, Israel, my father, take this firstborn of government, Jehovah, and let him become the one he is supposed to become. Father God, take this firstborn daughter, oh Lord, Jehovah God, amongst the daughters of Jehovah God and oh beautifier would you just beautify her again my father would you once again make a sum of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ my father in the name of Jesus when they say that there's a downcasting my father we declare that there's an uprising in America my God raise up the intercessors my God raise up the prophetic voices my God speak in a dream and in a vision father I even believe that indeed the church in America it's not that Lord God that those who are, are, are black Father God and and believe completely that this man is the devil. It's not that they are not walking with you, King of Glory. I know what it is, oh God, to be deceived. I know what it is, oh God, to walk without a revelation. And that's what's causing the perishing. So my father appeared to them in dreams. My father appeared to them in visions. My father began to appear to them to cause them to have such a conviction that they cannot move away. And we arise now against the bitterness of Black Lives Matter and the agenda behind that because it is not the title of what is there. It's just a spirit to cause dissension, to cause division, to cause trouble, my father. We ask, Father, that you'd cause, oh God, the blacks in America to understand what is going on. Because Father, because of their connection to Africa, as revival begins to spring forth from Africa, the end time revival, my Father, Satan would have them caught up in their identity. Satan would have them caught up in thinking that they are dealing with policemen shooting people. My God, what we saw of that man stepping on the neck of this guy is not a human being. My father, these are agents of Satan. And so in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask, open the eyes of your remnant that they would see what they are dealing with. For your word says, my father, in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 12 to verse 18, that we must stand through the armor of God. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness. Rulers in high places, Jehovah, expose them. 
expose them expose them father as you have been exposing wickedness in Kenya go ahead and expose them in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach then father the enemy has come up with this COVID thing Jehovah we are shocked to hear what's going on in Melbourne Jehovah God I spoke to someone in Sydney who told me the same but to be honest I didn't believe it Jehovah but indeed it is true father God that in the nations that are of true interest to you my father where the people have not understood who they are and have been caught up in the luxuries of the fact that their nations are developed my father quite a number of people oh god have been caught in a situation where the nations or oh master savior are being led into complete wickedness because of the contention and yet here we are oh god with our precious sisters oh god from melbourne and across the world jehovah that have refused to be silent jehovah so in america my king where this issue of COVID-19 has become such a contentious matter, Jehovah God. Arise, Jehovah, and deal. Arise, Jehovah, and deal. Father, that it would not be that we are shut down, oh God, by wickedness so that they can bring in their things, Jehovah God. Father, as you spoke to us about Kenya, you told us, Father God, even as this abortion bill has gotten into our Senate, you told us that coronavirus is part of the gimmick of Satan, not just to test, to see the preparedness for the, the, the Antichrist to be released, but that it's also a way of silencing the church so that when we are quiet, those who walk in darkness would begin to align for themselves and gain back the territory that they have lost. My father, raise up your children in America to know the Lord God. COVID-19 should not stop them in any form or way, Jehovah God for it shall not come near them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we have reopened the church in Kenya, not a single sickness case, Jehovah God. And we refuse the lie, Jehovah King of glory, that this is about our weather. That is nonsense and a lie. Just like they had lied to us, oh God, that black people cannot get coronavirus. So Father, open the eyes of your children. It is urgent. Father, open their eyes. Cause them to arise. Father, we ask you also to protect President Donald Trump against the assassination plans of the enemy, Lord Jehovah God, and against sicknesses and things that were intended, Lord God, to finish him. They even thought that this COVID-19 would finish him because of his age bracket. But behold, Father, you have protected him and you have preserved him. And Father, we are not saying as a church that he's a righteous man. We are not saying as a church, oh God, that even he stands for you, Jehovah God, in terms of being born again, Jehovah God. We just know that just like you used that donkey to speak to Balaam, Lord God, you can use this man. That Lord God, just as you used Cyrus, Jehovah, King of glory, King Cyrus, Jehovah, and even gave resources, oh God, to Nehemiah, you're using this man. Jehovah, we are fully aware that you do not need, oh God, for somebody to be born again for you to use them, Lord God. It's up to you, and that's what you choose, oh God, who you're going to use and when. And so, Lord, we put ourselves behind this man and his government, and we pray, oh God, for them, oh Lord, Jehovah God, the Republican Party, Lord God, and what they stand for. We pray for them, O oh Lord Jehovah God, and even the pastors that walk with them, O oh God, in the White House. Let the anointing and the glory of God be heavy upon them. Let the revelation of Jehovah be mighty upon them. Let the prophetic gifting come upon them, even if it's for a season, Jehovah King of glory. And let them be several steps ahead, O oh God, of the democratic wickedness, Jehovah King of glory. They call it Democrat, but it's not Jehovah God. We thank you and we honor you, Jehovah King of glory. Master, have your way in putting us abide it, that we will indeed bear down and birth, O oh God, the right government into this nation, even in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much, Apostle Kathy, for such a powerful uh, a prayer uh, for the nation of America and for the president. We can all feel the presence of God and the heart of God. Uh, we are about to uh, to finish uh, seriously. You know, God cannot allow a, a, pre, a, a president who is fighting abortion, uh, even as Apostle Carter was praying, to be brought down. I mean, we used to lose so many babies. Trump closed down many of these clinics by refusing to give sponsorship here in Kenya. Uh, do you remember the name of those uh, cl clinics? I just I'm just forgetting their names. Uh, Parenthood. There's Planned Parenthood, um, which is the main one. Yeah, yeah, which was sponsored by America. Absolutely. But now he stopped our funding. And so 
Uh, now, I just want to uh, read the scriptures and then pray, and then I close. Jeremiah 27, 6 to 8, the Bible says, Now, and now, I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beasts of the field have given him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come. And many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. Uh, so uh, America is that kind of nation that has been raised up by God with such a powerful uh, governmental anointing and as a voice uh, for the nations. And uh, we, we, we don't, that doesn't mean that America is a, a righteous country. They have their own weaknesses but it is special in the heart of God because of his agendas, as I said before. In Daniel 2, 21, 22, the Bible tells us that God, he changeth the times and season. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that are not understanding. He revealeth the deep things and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Uh, the Lord spoke to me concerning America some uh, years back, that Barack Obama was going to be the last powerful uh, president uh, from the Democratic Party. Because of the agendas and the way they opened up spiritual space for demonic uh, infusion to come into the, the, the land of America, God's plan for America was to put the Democratic Party in the freezer for the next uh, 16 years, you know, that is Trump having his eight years and then another eight years so that righteousness can gain ground in America. And so I just want to pray right now in the name of Jesus that the God who changes the times and the seasons, we, we know that uh, uh, it's been a very rough time and a very rough season for President Trump, as uh, Apostle Kathy and uh, Minister Evelyn have said, it has really been very difficult. But we want to proclaim over this altar that there is going to be a, a shift, there is going to be a change in the seasons and in the times, because God is the one who changes those times and those seasons. And so, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that there will be a change in America, a change in times, a change in seasons, that the season for deception is over. We decree and declare as apostolic and a prophetic people, the season for lies, the season for deception is over in the mighty name of Jesus. The light shineth in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. So we right now release the light of God in the media houses, Marco Zakataya, to expose all the lies, all the deceptions, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and to confound their lives that from now, even the American people, their minds will be opened to reject all the lies that are coming through media in the name of Jesus. We declare a shift in the spiritual atmosphere of America in Jesus' name, that they shall know the truth and the truth that they know shall set them free from all the lies, the cartels of lies. And Heavenly Father, we just want to declare to some of these media houses that are always cooking lies and cooking lies, that least, let this be the last time that they shall ever shine, ever shine. As you are shaking the heavens and you are shaking the earth, may you shake those media houses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The Bible has told us that you are the one who pulls down kings and you set up others. Lord, we pray, may you again, you did it four years ago, may you again set up Donald Trump to lead the nation of America for the next four years. Father Lord, we cannot afford to continue hearing the blood of innocent babies crying before your presence 
whose blood has been terminated through the vehicle of abortion that the Democrats are standing for, that cannot continue to take place in the land in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray that the very way that you removed the wheels from the chariots of the Egyptians, that their chariots could not move when they came after Israel, may you remove the wheels from the chariots of the Democrats in the mighty name of Jesus. Confound their wheels. Mako seke brekatoza magadeza. Remandosha makataya. Reka soko zaya. In Isaiah, in Psalm 68, verse 1 to 2, you say that, Arise, Lord, and let his enemies be scattered. Father, Lord, we pray, may the Lord arise in America, and may he scatter all your enemies that are against your agenda, that are against your man, that are against the candidate that you have chosen. Let there be a scattering in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Marco And Father, from now on, as we are in the first week of September, we proclaim to the nation of America in the name of Jesus, let things begin to work against them, scatter them, bring everlasting confusion to them in the name of Jesus. And we pray for President Trump, let there be no weapon formed against him that shall prosper. We declare he is a protector. We declare you are his refuge in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we also pray for the people that are going to be carrying out the counting of the votes and all that kind of thing, there will be no manipulation. We stop that in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray for a tiring of the church. Let the church be revived to arise and to pray for your purposes to be established in the land of the United States. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Mandosha Magadoza Makateza Magadila. Rendo Seme Katoza Makataya. We know that there are some wicked men. Some of them have even been mentioned in the, in the news, like George Soros, that have always caused a lot of demonic gen agendas and promoted them. Father, confound their agendas. Confound their plans, oh my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we bless America. Marco Secretary, but Trump has restored prayer. He has restored prayer. He has given the American people to even celebrate Christmas, which was not allowed before. You could not mention, you could only say, Happy Holidays. Heavenly Father, let this anointed servant of yours gain favor with the people in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Release a fresh oil upon his life. Lord, as you did the miracle in 2016, we await for another miracle. Awaken the churches, revive the churches in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise up intercessors to pray for your purposes in the United States of America. Father, we thank you because you have heard our prayers today, even as we intercede from Kenya and from Australia and Malaysia and every other people that have joined us. And we, we, we declare it's going to be well. We seize that gate in the month of November. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we believe. Amen and amen and amen. And uh, as we come to the end, I just want to invite... Um, our sister all the way from Minnesota, uh, Ruth Karenge. She's, uh, she's a medical worker uh, based uh, in America. She's uh, now an American Kenyan to just uh, uh, say a few words and pray and close this meeting. Yes, Ruth. We can't hear you. I think there's something wrong with our network. We're not hearing you, Ruth. Hello? Hello, okay. 
I think uh, we are we are unable to connect uh, uh, with Ruth, but uh, I, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, thank you so much, um, Minister Evelyn. I know it is uh, it must be one o'clock in Australia now, and your eyes and your body is requesting for the bed. But well, thank you so much for tarrying and uh, you know waiting to, yeah, to to join us. Thank you so much. Thank Hello. you for having me. Yes. Thank. You. Yes, yes, yes. Please continue encouraging the intercessors, the group that you have formed up, to continue praying for America until uh, the election day. Yes. And we are doing this. Yeah. yeah. We shall mobilize another meeting maybe next month. Again, pray together and generate, uh, you know, supernatural power to, for the purposes of God to, to be fulfilled. And uh, thank you so much, Apostle Kathy. Thank you. Ruth, are you able to, are you on? Uh, I see you're muted. Can you unmute? Uh, you need to be unmuted. Let me see. Uh, Ruth is muted. Uh, yeah. Hey. There you go. No, I think she can't come on. She's can't come. And all the people, that have joined us, uh, you know, uh, you know, all the way. We see people from different countries that have been able to join us. Uh, God bless you so much for loving America. Let's continue pushing, uh, uh, you know, and uh, see the purposes of God established. We shall be having another meeting pray for the U.S. next month. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Shalom. Bye-bye.